So a really useful feature when signing up a user, especially if they're signing up with an email, is to verify their email, is to know that they haven't signed up with a fake email. But the best way to do that is to actually send them an email to the email address that they signed up with and let them click a link to verify their email address. Now typically this can be quite complex to set up, but with Parse it's very, very easy. So now just open up the source code, the code that you cloned from the CodeCraft GitHub repo, the Parse server code, open it up in your favorite editor. I I'm just using Sublime here right now, but you can use whichever editor that you want. So you can see as you scroll down, so you can see I've actually commented out a number of lines of code. This is because as we go through the course, I'm going to uncomment various lines and show you, it will explain to you what each of those does. So this is just how we configure the Parse server to work exactly how you want it to work. So to switch on email verification, we first need to add the verify user emails key and set it to true. We also need to uncomment the public server URL and we're going to set it to the server URL, which is the same as what we've set up before. Now this public server URL is just going to be used in the emails that we sent out to, or that we send out to users. And it's, well, we really need to generate a link that they can click on. So that link needs to send them back to the server URL. So we just need to tell it which is the server URL to use. We're just going to use the same one as our main one. And we also need to give it an, an app name. So this will be appear in the subject and body of the emails that is sent. So I'm going to use a configuration variable called app name. And finally, let's just uncomment this block here. So this is basically the adapter, the code that we will use to send emails. Now with Parse Server, you can actually set it up to send email using a number of different services. You can set it up with SendGrid or Mandrill and also Mailgun. Now Mailgun I found to be the easiest one to use. So I wanna show you how to use that one. So the Mailgun adapter has a couple of options. The first one is email from. So in the emails that are sent from your server to your users, this will show up as the from address. This will show up as the domain that the email is coming from. So we're using an environment variable called Mailgun domain, which is gonna be added by Mailgun automatically to your environment variables when you add it on Heroku. And the final one is your API key, kind of your password to the Mailgun system. So the Mailgun system knows that you are who you say you are. So save all of that, and then jump into your Heroku dashboard, go into the settings tab for your application, click on reveal config variables, and in there, add the app name config variable, set it to whatever you want. I've set it to CodeCraft example. Set the email from, and again, set it to whatever you want. I've set it to no reply codecraft.tv. And then you don't need to set these other two here. These should be set up automatically for you as long as you have added Mailgun as a resource. So the API key is the password here. And the domain is the domain it's gonna show up that the email is coming from here. So just make sure those four settings are set. Once they're set, go into your terminal. You want to change stage the index.js for being committed and then run git commit and then just describe the change that you that you're making. So I'm just gonna say adding email verification, then save that file and quit. Okay, so now we've committed that change. Then we want to push to Heroku using git push Heroku master. Okay, so now that has been pushed to Heroku and the app is now restarting. And then you can just go back into the dashboard for Heroku, click on activity. And you can see here we go, it has detected the deploy. And again, if you've added, go back to resources. If you've added paper trail, just double click it. Or sorry, single click it. and just make sure that it has restarted and restarted correctly. Yep, state changed from started start, from starting to up is what you're looking for. Okay, so now we know that the push has been accepted by Heroku, our code is now running on the Heroku server. 
So now we've set up our PARS server code to support email verification. We've added in the correct config variables in the Heroku dashboard. And the final thing we need to do is we need to set up Mailgun to send data on our behalf, so to send emails on our behalf. So what we need to do is we need to go into our resources tab and just click on the Mailgun resource. This will open it up in another tab. And the very first thing we need to do, if you see at the top, is please activate your account to start sending emails. So let's click here to start. And it's going to ask to verify your account via a phone number. So just go ahead and verify that. Okay, and then once you've activated your Mailgun account, it should redirect you here. And it should say, thanks for activating your Mailgun account at the top. So to be able to send email from Mailgun, it needs to come from a domain. Okay, so an email needs to come from, let's say, codecraft.tv. So what Mailgun want you to do, Mailgun want you to set up your own domain so the email come, looks like it's coming from you. That's because, well, really, if they took ownership of that and then they made it look like the email was coming from Mailgun, then people could come along and start abusing the Mailgun service to start sending spam. Because spam really is linked to the domain that it's coming from. So they don't want to have any spam linked to the Mailgun service. So really, before you start sending email from Mailgun, you really need to have it linked to a domain, a domain that you own. And I'm going to show you how to add a custom domain later on. But for now, we just want to send an email. But really for testing, they've actually already provided a kind of a demo domain that we can use. So if you go back into the Heroku configuration variables, you can see they provided us this domain that we can use. So if you look at the end of it, let's try and edit it so you can see. It. You can see it's actually coming from mailgun.org. So they do provide kind of a temporary domain that you can use. They don't want you to use this domain for everything. They just want to let you use this domain so you can kind of start sending out some emails while you're in development. And it's called basically your sandbox domain, your testing domain. Now to send email from your testing domain to somebody, you have to specify an authorized recipient first of all. So we're just gonna do this. Now remember, you only have to do this because we're just using a sandbox domain for development. I will show you how to set up a custom domain which will let you send emails to anybody without first adding them as a specific recipient first. But just for now, just for development, we're just gonna add the recipient of our email first of all. So just click add recipient, click invite new recipient, and I'm going to test one at codecraftpro.com. Send invite. Okay. This will send this person an email or this email address an email. Click the link to activate it and to make sure that they are okay with receiving email from this sandbox domain. Okay, so now Melgan has sent me an email to asim plus test one at codecraftpro.com. I've clicked it and I've said I'm okay with Melgan sending me emails. Now we've set up Pass Server so that it's got the right settings to send emails when a new user signs up. We've set up Heroku with the correct environment variables, and we've set up well, we've set up Melgan with the correct settings for development. Now let's go back to where we were and create and sign up a new user to PARS. So I'm just gonna copy this email address here. I'm gonna go back into our JS bin. I'm gonna uncomment the sign up section. Let's clear this out. And then let's set the username to asim plus test one and set that up there. Let's open up the console. Let's refresh the page and then let's run. Okay, so it's created another user. Let's go to the PARS dashboard. Let's find this user. It should be the first one. Okay, so it's this one here. It's the first one. So let's double check. Asim plus test one at codecraftpro.com. But there's something different. If you look at the email verified column, this has now been set to false. So what this means is that this user 
has not verified their email address yet. And if you were to check your email account or whichever email platform that you use, you should have received, it might take a few minutes, but you should have received an email with the title, please verify your email for and whatever name you put in for the app. You can see the email from address is whatever we set up for as the from address. The domain is the, well, this is the, the demo domain that we had and it's, well, it's sent to the correct address. And what we have to do is we have to click here to confirm it. So let me just click there. And there you go. Now it's successfully verified your email. So now if I go into back into the PARS dashboard, let me refresh. You can see that the email verified flag is now true. Now that we can see that the email verified is set to true in the dashboard, let's see what gets returned when we log in in the JavaScript console. So what I've done now is in the, let's kill that just so it's clearer. So now I'm just doing pars user login. This is the new user, the user that has the email verified. And then I'm just gonna log the attributes. So let's just run that. Let's get some space. And there you can see another, oh, another property called email verified, which is now true. So that's how you can check in your JavaScript API at least whether the currently logged in user has a verified email. If this parameter is present and set to true, you know that they have a verified email. If this parameter isn't set, if email verified doesn't even exist, then you know that they haven't verified their email. And you can adjust their experience through your application accordingly.